What is going on guys? My name is Hussein and we have all been there. We made a fetch command, we do it then, and then we try to just to print the result. However, we get this weird response object while we actually expected uh, the actual content of google.com. It is the same thing when I am requesting JSON. I don't get the JSON back, I get, uh, get this response object back. And the same thing applies when requesting the a PDF. I request that PDF, I say console.log, so print whatever you said, and instead I get this response object back. So so yeah, this response object keeps showing up. So in this, and we quickly learned that, oh, we actually have to get that result, the response object, and what we do is call in another function, which is whether this is text, blob or json and then after that we will get that actual content whether this is html or in case of pdf we do a blob and we get back the actual blob which we can use or in case of json we do that json method which will essentially give us the actual jsons so in this video i want to explain why do we have this hop why do we need to do multiple vans right and uh, multiple await in, the f in case if you're using async await with fetch so if you're interested there's a good reason behind it if you're interested stay tuned in order to explain why do we have to do multiple vans guys i want to explain what really happens when we do this when i do a fetch google.com or a fetch give me that pdf or a fetch give me that uh json what does really happen we make a get request to the server right and that server when i send that information that get request is getting sent with information and we get back a response and the response consists of headers the response consists of body and the response consists of status codes and some metadata that's the trick here so what we don't get one piece back we get headers we get body okay headers tells us information about the body okay however the body is the actual content and here's the trick so whoever built the fetch api said you know what since headers are cheaper to parse when you make that request what do you get back you get back a bunch of bits and binary right so we cannot just present this ones and zeros to the user we need to show them something useful right or her what do we do is we will try to make sense of the header. So we, they will try to parse the headers and bring you back this. And they start building what they call the response object. And the response object is a quick, cheap way of building just the headers and the status code and some other information. It does not include the body. And why is that? Because most of the time, the body is the most expensive things to parse. Because imagine if you had to always wait for the fish request to actually always parse the body, then you just lost on the opportunity for people or who only interested in the headers, right? Because you are taking the extra hit to parse the body so we can understand what's this, so we can compile it for you just so you can read the header. So that's why the, it's now sp split into two steps. So the first step is you're going to give you this information and we're going to prove it to you now, right? So that object that we get back, uh, it's called S, right? The stream, whatever. If I do console.log and I say s.status, I can print the status, which is oh, you can you can make decisions but just based on the header without taking the head to parse the body, which, which is always expensive, right? Uh, imagine you're getting a PDF back and that then is parsing the PDF just so you can look at the status. You don't really, really need it, right? Let's say... Uh, you made a P you, you're downloading a PDF, but you don't want to actually download or you don't want to parse the PDF for download unless the actual user requested to download. So that's an actually a very nice use case. Another thing you can access is as dot headers dot get content type. What is the content type? we get back a text to html and in case of json we're gonna get back the correct content type and in case of pdf we're gonna get the correct pdf back right so that's why we have multiple steps to actually get that and let's just finally do show this 
in uh, the PDF format here, right? So if I do this and I said, okay, a dog um, headers, let's just print what we have back, right? Dot here console dot log uh, a dot headers dot get content type, right? And you can back, you get back application PDF. So now you can make decisions based on that. Do I really want to parse that? And if you decide you want to parse it, then you do a dot blob. First of all, you know right now what's the type, so you know which method to call in order to parse. And blob is the most expensive one because it's going to convert into an actual executable, or in this case, just a PDF file, right? And that the conversion from binary to the PDF is, is going to take a little bit of finite amount of time. So we don't want it to do it in a synchronous manner. We want it to do it in an asynchronous manner and non-blocking because we love that stuff. That's why we do another promise call. It says, okay, go ahead, do the conversion. Whenever you're ready, give me the result. And that will give you the actual result, which you can use to download, which you can use to process. You can do anything you want. All right, guys, that was a quick video to show you why do we need multiple vans and multiple async awaits to actually get to the content you need to get with Fetch. All right, uh, like this video if you like it, dislike it if you didn't like it, and I'm going to see you on the next one. You guys stay awesome.